I'm Jacob from Warren. When we want to know how much energy our homes are using, it always comes down to three factors, which we call the energy equation. Those three factors are the house shell, the house systems, and the occupant behavior. This time, we're going to talk about the house systems, and specifically, the lighting and appliances. When we look at the things in our home that use electricity, we run into one problem. We generally don't get any control over how much power they use. That's set at the factory. I don't get to go up to my television, for example, and say, I love this show. I'm going to crank it up to 600 watts. It just uses however much power it uses. The main time we get to control how much power something uses is when we buy it, because that's when we get to choose which item we're going to buy. Here's the key. Anything you buy that uses energy actually has two costs. There's a purchase cost and there's the operating cost. How much does it cost to power that thing? In some cases, the operating cost will actually far surpass the purchase cost over several years, and yet most people tend to ignore it. As an example, let's look at light bulbs. A 100 watt bulb and a 60 watt bulb cost the same amount of money to buy. But a 100 watt bulb uses almost twice as much power as a 60 watt bulb. What that means is if you're using that light for about three hours a day, the 100 watt bulb would cost more than four dollars on your electric bill than the 60 watt bulb would. So you want to make sure you use the right light for the right situation. Another example of using the right light for the right situation is the bathroom or hallway. If you keep an overhead light on at night, try switching to a night light instead. An even more economical option is this, the Compact Fluorescent Light Bulb, or CFL. Now the problem some folks have with this bulb is that it costs about $5 for a single light bulb, though you can often get it cheaper if you buy several in a pack. But that's the purchase cost. What about that operating cost? If we look at this display here, we can compare the light of both bulbs. There's the light from a Compact Fluorescent. And there's a light from a regular incandescent bulb. Similar light quality. But if we look at this meter, it's going to show us how much power it's using. The regular bulb is providing this light for 75 watts. We get the same light from the compact fluorescent for only 20 watts. And that's going to mean savings for your bill. You want to start by switching out the lights that you use the most, because those are the lights that cost you the most. If you switch out a single bulb that you use a fair amount with a compact fluorescent, in one year, it'll save you $10 off of your utility bill. $5 for the bulb, but $10 saved. That means it just paid for itself and let you keep some extra cash in your pocket. Better yet, the compact fluorescent bulb lasts a lot longer than a regular light bulb. Usually going to be about 10,000 hours, which means three to seven years with standard usage. By the time this bulb burns out, It'll have saved you about $50 off your bill. So $5 to buy it, but $50 in savings. That's a pretty incredible return on investment. And if you're someone who leaves some light on 24 hours a day, you could save $50 in a single year just by switching out this bulb. Now we'd recommend that you might want to put that light on a sensor so it's only working when you need it. But still, in any case, this bulb means savings. One of the biggest electricity users in the home is the refrigerator. For older models, electricity costs can run from $90 to $200 a year, and that's if it's in good working condition. If it's in poor condition, the cost could be even higher. So let's look at the easy steps we can take to help reduce the fridge's energy use. One thing we want to do is call the dollar bill test. We're going to check the seals on the door. So if you open up the door, Put a dollar bill inside, give it a little yank. If the dollar bill holds, the seal is good. But if it slides out too easily, then that seal isn't holding. Don't keep the temperature control for the fridge or freezer set too cold. The middle of the temperature dial is usually the factory recommended setting. If your model has an energy saver switch, hit it. This can save 5 to 10% of the fridge's electric use. 
If you have a fridge from 1992 or earlier, you may want to consider buying a new one. Fridges made since 2001 have dramatically better energy performance than older models. Finally, if you have a second fridge, consider whether you really use it or need it. If not, unplug it and you'll save a lot of money. Looking at both the purchase cost and the operating cost is the key to appliance shopping. Fortunately, many major appliances include this yellow energy guide, which will tell you how much you can expect the appliance to cost on your annual utility bills. This bar right here compares the energy use of this model with other models, and it tells us this one's pretty close to ones that use the least energy. But it doesn't compare to different kinds of models, and you might find bigger energy savings there. So what I would do is compare it with this figure at the bottom. This tells you how much this appliance will actually cost on your bills with average usage. With using that, you can compare to other models and figure out the most energy efficient model out there. So be a conscious consumer and shop around. Also, look for the Energy Star logo as an indication of those items that are more energy efficient. The Energy Star logo is a national standard that you can trust to find energy efficient equipment. So remember, compact fluorescent light bulbs are an excellent way to save on your energy bill and you should use them in place of the lights that you use the most. Also remember to use the right light for the right situation, such as putting a night light in the bathroom at night instead of using an overhead light. You should also maintain your refrigerator well and unplug any second fridge or deep freezer that you don't really need. Finally, shop for energy savings. And don't forget to look at that operating cost in addition to the purchase cost.